ready? Yeah, we're recording now. Okay. All right, briefly share some points of the interview. So whoever wants to start, just share some points of their interview. Um, well, the, the person I interviewed was um, actually my cousin because she has two boys. But neither of them have special needs. Um, the only thing that she pointed out was that her oldest, you know, he had like trouble developing like language skills and he's just barely starting to like really communicate in sentences and stuff. And he's, I think he's just barely turning four in June. And, you know, so he's able to communicate with you like in Spanish and in English now in full sentences. So I think that's pretty great. And I actually witnessed that when I went back home um, last month and I went to go visit them and he was like talking to me in English and Spanish and I was like, what? He's talking to me in English too? And then his, and his mom was like, yeah, he's able to talk in full sentences. And I was like, oh, okay. So when I interviewed her, obviously that came up as well. So that was pretty awesome. That is awesome. I want to be like bilingual. Yeah. Um, I can just go next real quick. Um, so I did an interview with the, my uh, sister-in-law and she has a four or five-year-old and a two-year-old. And it was interesting to, like he didn't, because our five-year-old has um, just asthma and that was it. But like it actually impacted him in a lot of ways where like the mom actually didn't want him to like go outside during certain times. And like, so then like it kind of didn't give him the friendships, but it didn't really like disable him because he doesn't have special needs. He just has asthma. Um, but the two year old, he like talks crazy fast, crazy clear already. And I can barely understand the five year old. So it was interesting. Even brothers were so different. Does anyone want to <laughs> go next? <laughs> I'll go next. I interviewed my sister, and she has three kids. She has a six-year-old and then four-year-old twins. And the girl twin has, um, like, a speech development problem, so she can't enunciate most of her words. And her twin brother is autistic, and so she, my sister has two kind of special needs kids plus the six-year-old. Got a handful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a handful. Well, in mine, um, so I interviewed a lady I know who has three kids. Oldest is nine. Then there's a seven-year-old, and there's a five-year-old. And the two oldest are girls, and the youngest is a boy. And none of them have any like special needs. But she did talk about how her oldest developed. Um, faster as far as she never crawled she walked and she walked early and then her other two just were normal as far as development goes but she did say that um, when her oldest went to school she had a hard time gripping things so she actually had to take her to a specialist to be able to just grip that's super interesting yeah it sounds like all of us had very like very different interviews um so the next question is after doing this interview what was your sense of normal versus and like what does normal really mean do you have any any of you have something specific or well i guess i even showed even in like quote unquote normal kids that they all develop at different times. they they might have difficulties in different areas um but usually you can work through those things, um, especially if you have someone who knows what they're doing. Definitely. Well, it means to me that, like, now that I, like, I have my own kid, like, people are like, oh, is he walking? And I'm like, he's only 11 months old. But, like, people have expectations that at 12 months, you know, they should start walking. Like, they, people have expectations at certain times that certain things could happen. And it would be okay if it was a couple months later or if it was a month earlier or if, you know like those sort of things they can have a pretty very but what normal is can be very relative mm-hmm. 
Does for, anyone else have anything else to say? Or? For me, normal is really different for, like, each kid. Because the girl twin, for her, normal is when she's talking to you, you have to, like, drop everything you're doing and drop, get rid of all the distractions so you can really focus on what she's saying. Now it's better because I can, like, understand that when she says Tenji or Tendra, she's really saying Kendra, which is my name. She can't say K's. And for my nephew, it's normal for him to, as soon as when he's in the house, you have to make sure that you lock the doors to make sure, because he's a runner. And if no one's watching him, he'll go out the door and he'll run away. And he thinks it's a game because he brought back, so he got brought back from by the police one time because we couldn't find him. And he just thought it was a game because he got a ride in a cool cop car. Meanwhile, everyone else is freaking out because we were just, like, washing the dishes and we turned around and he was gone. So we were all freaking out, but he thought that it was just a little game. <laughs> well, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I was just thinking. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. No, no. The thing, like, when I think normal, I don't, I'm not really sure, like, what really is normal, you know? I mean, because every child is different. They develop differently. Even, like, children who do have special needs, you know? I wouldn't consider them not to be normal because, you know, even children who do have special needs, um, I have come to, like, read about special needs kids who turn out to be, like, really smart kids and things, and people don't realize it because they're like, oh, you know, he has he or she has special needs and, and they could never be normal but I don't really consider that to be true so you know for me the word normal is like irrelevant really when it comes to a child like I don't know what really is normal though <laughs> if you really think about it you know because like every child is different whether they have special needs or not everyone is so different there's no normal <laughs> Sorry if you can hear everyone in the background. I keep trying to put it on mute in between. Um, the next thing is, did you find out, did you find that parents were often, I'm sorry. My phone is going crazy today. Did you find that the parents were often the last to know if there was a delay or problem with their child? How did they come to that awareness? And did you get a sense of whether or not the parents receptive or receiving services? So I didn't have a special need. Um, so mine is irrelevant, but was it was Alyssa and Kendra, you both had someone that was had special needs. Were they the last to know or? Yeah, in her case, like she kind of noticed, but it wasn't until like a teacher made it known to her that she really realized it was a problem. And she said that helped her to, with her other kids, she's always um, talking to the teachers and trying to see if there's some kind of problem that she's just not aware of or notices. And for me, sorry, I did the interview a couple a while ago, so I have to look at my notes that I took. So the video is not going to show everyone's face, and it'll show my Word document. <laughs> um, That's okay. <laughs> Um, well, you're looking for that right now, right? Yeah. Okay, will you look for that? We'll just kind of get to the next question, and then you can kind of come back to it if you'd like. Um, did you guys get a sense that the parents were uncomfortable or had a sense of denial, shame, or embarrassment with the special needs? Or did they feel a sense of resolution or acceptance? Um, the, the special need that my um, person had was just the asthma and, like, Hers was more like overly, overly parenting and just, and it was like, this isn't a huge deal as long as you're on, on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. But she was over, I don't know if that's the right word, overly parenting, but she was overly sensitive about it and very careful. She had fears of having a kid anywhere but besides her, her. So like, hers was very interesting that she was just like overly sensitive, overly protective. No, but now it's just never asking, so I'm curious about your guys's. Yeah, so mine, she seemed okay with it. Didn't really seem to be 
until she realized that there were people who could help. Um, but it was interesting. She um, had a sister, and um, but she didn't ever live with her. And then there was a problem that arose, and so she did start living with her when she was like 14. And uh, she realized something was off, so she got her tested and found out that she was uh, mentally retarded. She was only at the age of a two-year-old, basically. And that sounded like more of um, kind of, not embarrassed necessarily, but it was just difficult because um, she's from Africa. And so there they don't understand special needs as well. And so people were very judgmental and, and didn't understand what was going on. I couldn't find the notes that I was looking for in my assignment. But it basically said that with all the, like, delays that she saw in her children, she kind of knew that there was something off. She didn't know, like, what to call it, but she did know that there was something wrong. And so when she found out that it was autism and that it was a speech delay, she wasn't, like, ashamed of it because she knew that there was something already. And she was kind of happy to know that there was a diagnosis because then my nephew... He got like a home, not like home care, but like a an aide in his preschool class. And there was a bunch of speech things that were recommended for her daughter so that they could keep progressing. That's interesting. Um, Jesse, do you have anything to add? I know you didn't have a special needs um, kid you interviewed for the parent, but... Uh, no, but from what I gathered, what Jesse told me, that she did say that she was a little worried that, you know, he still wouldn't really speak well and, like, you know, like, sometimes she was worried that he would, like, say something and, like, you know, like, it would worry her because then she'd be like, I don't know what you're saying or something. You know, fortunately for her, because she was the mom, she could kind of get an idea what her son was telling her. But, you know, she was worried that he wouldn't start speaking, you know, full sentences, you know, soon enough. And, like, because she would be, like, because she has, like, a young brother, like, around the same age as her son. So, um, so she would be, like, she said that she would see the difference between her brother, like, he would actually be able to speak full, ten you know, full sentences and her son wouldn't be able to do that. So it worried her. But, you know, other than that, she was fine. And even, like, with her youngest. She thinks it's a little funny because, like, her youngest is catching on a lot faster than her oldest was. But, uh, you know, I kind of told her that it's probably because, like, you know, he sees his older brother, so he's, like, following in his footsteps and, like, you know, he's catching on a lot quicker and, like, I don't know, it's just, you know, it's funny that to see the difference between the two of them, so. That was awesome. Um, so there's one last question, it's like a follow-up question, um, and then we're done. So basically, what can we learn from this experience about like norm normative variations, um, or, I can't say that word, matern, I don't know how to say that word, so let's see. Basically, what can you learn from this experience, and did you see any themes or patterns? Um, I learned, I don't know, I learned that everybody really experiences every kid so differently and like I always said the normal isn't necessarily a normal because this two-year-old of hers really I mean caught on to everything but he got angry so much quicker and he was more sensitive on that form where the five-year-old was super sensitive at that age and was emotional but it wasn't ever angry and so it was interesting even at that kind of emotions they were different that's what I got from it Well, I'd say um, that every child, like you were saying, is different. And I think um, as long as the parent is okay with the differences, that usually they, they come out okay. And they're able to usually overcome those things. And they end up just fine in the end. They, they can overcome like speech impediments or, you know, not be able to fold a pencil right or things like that it just takes practice and 
having someone there to help them um, overcome their challenges. I like how you said if the parents are okay with it. Because when the parents are okay with it, then the parents can focus more on how to fix things and how to help the kids. Like, my nephew, when he gets mad, just, like, back away and let him do his thing and then come back to him. And his twin sister, when she gets mad, you make her laugh and then she's fine. But if you laugh at my nephew when he's mad, he just gets even more mad and he... Yeah, it's bad. So, it's really interesting to like be so close to two different kids and they're like so close because they're twins but they're so different and like everyone is so different even though they might be the same in some aspects um for me i guess like what i would have to comment on this is like because both of the boys are so close in age I think that's why the smaller, the youngest one, sorry, is developing faster. Um, you know, especially because he does, both of the boys just live with a whole bunch of adults. It's where they live with their aunt, their parents, and their grandparents. So they're like, you know, they don't have to like really deal with other younger kids except them two. So, you know, I think that's the reason why the youngest one is like developing a little faster than his older brother ever did. Um, yeah, because even in my own family, I saw the difference, like, because of how many kids we were compared to them, and, you know, so, like, and it was just my parents at home, so, you know, there is different, there's definitely a difference within each family, so, that was, that's all that I noticed. <laughs> that was perfect, guys. Um, does anyone have anything else they I wanted to add from the interviews? Good. Thumbs up if we're good. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. I'm going to turn right, the recording off then. <laughs>